Here we have the base that used to be part of a hutch. The slatted design on the doors caught my attention while making a regular round at the thrift store. It's made of solid construction, dovetail drawers, but not very appealing looking. I'm envisioning a paint and linen texture like the one I tried on this dresser a few weeks ago. Welcome back to a light refurbish where you are reminded through furniture refinishing that there's hope it doesn't matter how tough things get. Just in case you're new to the channel, I have been refinishing furniture on a full-time basis for the past five years. And besides being therapeutic, it's great for the environment as we know. That's why I try to keep the hardware as much as possible. Unfortunately, when I have kept similar handles in the past like the one this piece has the pieces end up sitting in my home a little too long and have a hard time finding a new home that's why today in order to modernize what now i call a tv console i'll be changing the hardware and to make sure that my paint sticks i'm doing a quick wipe down of any dust and grime before i start sanding with 120 grit When I remove the hardware, I also remove the magnet and the latch that kept the doors closed. And because of that, this door kept swinging back open. It was driving me insane and upon further inspection, I discovered that there was a little bit of an anomaly, which I'll be addressing in a minute after I'm done sanding the two front legs that I'm planning on keeping bare and do a color wash on. give you a quick tip across here you see that gap and as you get farther and farther right here there is no gap that tells me that I need to sand more here because you might already know that when you add paint primer to that the thickness will increase therefore these will get even more snug so I need to make sure that that gap goes across So check out what he's doing now that I've sanded. Uh, it's not rubbing, so we're good. I'm clearing this piece from any dust and then I'm gonna be priming. And I'm gonna be explaining to you why I'm using two different primers today. to do a light color of a linen technique on this part. I love using Bin Shellac base primer when I'm gonna paint a light color. For the rest of it, since it's gonna be black, I'm gonna use the clear shellac. <laughs> Even though it is unlikely to see bleed through when you're painting with a black color, I still like to prime to promote good addition. And the primer is going to leave a very shiny surface. You still wanna get rid of that by doing a quick scuff sand before applying your paint. For the full linen technique that will be going inside the drawer panels, I'm mixing my own glaze by blending one-to-one -one ratio of paint and Floetrol. I don't need a lot of this glazing medium. So eight of a cup and eight of a cup of the Algonquin color. I'm probably gonna have leftover to be honest. The reason why I chose this linen technique is because as you know, rattan and cane are really on trend, but unfortunately they're super pricey. This technique is going to give me the high-end look for a lot less. From the day that I recorded this shot to today, I learned one thing that is going to make a huge difference in how well your full linen technique is going to turn out. And that is to apply the glaze and run the brush horizontally. Wait for that to dry before you apply another cut of the glaze and then run the brush vertically. 
Just like you, I'm planning on learning more about the techniques. How can I better execute them and pass that knowledge along to you guys? There is a person that if you don't follow, her name is Corny from Still Bridge Studios. I'm gonna post her account here. She has perfected this finish and is a master at it. This red graining tool, yeah, Corny doesn't use it. And to be honest, after trying it, I didn't like it either. So this is how I started over because you can always start over. I actually ended up um, wiping off my first try. I just added a little bit of water and wiped it down with a paper towel because I wasn't happy with how it looked. So this time, um, what I'm gonna do differently I'm gonna be using this brush instead of this graining tool. It was just not looking how I wanted it. I wanted it. something a little more subtle. The other thing I want to remind you is to keep a rag handy so that after every time you're running the brush through, there's going to be paint that accumulates on your brush. You want to get that off. Oops. Try to do it as straight as you can and do it a little slower than what I'm doing here. Do it as many times as you until you like it. While the technique dried, I went back out to the shop and loaded my detail finish nasal from Wagner with the color coal black from Fusion Mineral Paint and applied three coats. For this part here, I'm using a smaller and more detailed brush. And since I tend to be kind of a messy painter, I just put in some tape to hopefully prevent any of the black paint from getting into the falling and technique area. I was thinking how to bring that natural color on the drawers into the rest of the piece and the best solution that I could come up with was by doing a color wash using the same paint color to the two front legs. You guys have seen me use this technique plenty of times but just to remind you I'm using three parts water to one part paint here. All you do is to brush it, wait one minute, and then wipe it off with a wet or dry rag. Here, my section is so small that I'm just using a dry paper towel. The next day, once the paint was dry, I added a little bit of the cold black paint into my top coat to avoid my finish from turning hazy and apply three coats to protect this former hutch base turn into a TV console. Let's take a glance at how the piece started. And this is the new look for this former hutch turn into TV console. As always, let me know what you think of today's transformation. Don't forget to like, comment, and if you haven't subscribed, I will see you guys next time.